What is going on VW gang? Back at it with a video for tuning with Eurodyne Maestro 7. This will be part 2. If you haven't watched part 1, go ahead and catch yourself up. Familiarize yourself with the program and the process involved. Just to recap, last video we created a custom file using Maestro 7 for a Mark IV 1.8T Big Turbo. In this video, I'll be showing you guys the road tuning process in order to get your tune to tip top shape. Since the GTI is still not ready, no! I'll be using my Jetta as the victim for the tuning process. So let's get it Maestro gang. I have a file made for the Jetta already, so we're gonna flash it onto the ECU. The Eurodyne flash cable is already connected to the computer. Next thing is to plug the other end to the OBD2 port in the car. For my car, it's in the driver foot well. We downloaded three programs. Next one we're gonna use is the Eurodyne flash. A window will pop up. We'll start with this button here. Immediately a warning will pop up. Give this a good read because it is really important. In short, it explains that before you use this specific program from Eurodyne, you need to take several precautions to prevent any mishaps during the flashing process. If you don't follow these precautions, oh wells, don't freak out when your car turns into a paperweight. Or maybe not the whole car, just your ECU, but you get the point. Click yes and a new window will pop up. Here we got several options for certain users. We are among the Maestro gang, so this portion is all ours, including this feature up here. At this point, I've already set up my car with an account with Eurodyne, so I'm not going to touch any of these other options. New users will have to go through the entire registration process, which involves licensing your vehicle with Eurodyne and having your ECU information saved. Some of you were asking if the program can tune multiple cars. The answer is yes, but you will have to purchase a new license for any additional cars. In our case, instead of buying a new $800 Maestro, we'll purchase a license to register the GTI instead. Moving on, we're gonna use this option to flash your ECO with the Maestro file. But before you click it, you need to make sure your ignition in the car is on. So turn your key until all your lights come on, but don't start the car. Doing so will activate power to the ECU for the flashing process. Go ahead and click the option, and right after, the window will close and it'll connect to the ECU. Once connected, a window will pop up to select your Maestro file. Wherever you save your custom Maestro file is what you'll select and hit open and the flashing process will begin. At this point, you're going to want to keep your ignition on the entire time you are flashing your ECU. Do not turn the key, do not disconnect the cable, and threaten everyone to stay the f away from your car. Like I mentioned earlier, any interruption during this process will give you a nice expensive paperweight. When the flashing is complete, a new window from the program will pop up instructing you to politely turn off your ignition. Turn your key to the off position and make sure all the lights go dark. Then hit ignition is off button. It'll tell you to wait. After that, it politely instructs you to turn your ignition on. Okay, ignition is on. Same screen will pop up again. Do what it says, ignition off. Again, we turn the ignition on and the flash is complete. At this point, you're gonna wanna start your car to see if it operates at idle. If it's your first time starting the car with a new tune, you're gonna wanna perform a throttle body alignment, which can be done through the Eurodyne flash program. The purpose of this alignment is to cycle the throttle body through the various positions that happens when the car is operating. Typically, you would do this alignment anytime you mess with the throttle body that includes cleaning, swapping it out, or any hardware and software changes related to the throttle body. To do this, turn your ignition on and at the main menu of the flash program, click the far top right option for diagnostics and data logging. This feature is pretty much the VADCOM equivalent to access the measuring blocks. You can perform similar actions like the full version of VADCOM which includes troubleshooting and also to develop logs to further diagnose problems in detail. Onto the throttle body alignment, you're going to want to select the controller from this drop down menu for engine electronics. Then click get controller info. It will connect to your ECU. This big window here will display your ECU info when it is completely connected. And from there, you will get access to the measuring blocks. 
So we go ahead and click that option and we will get another window that we can work with. From this window, we can select up to four measuring blocks and display the data simultaneously. Right now, we'll start with just one. Set the measuring block in any box to 060 and hit enter. It'll bring up a set of values for our throttle body. These two values in percent shows the current position and the last box tells you the status of the adaptation which since it isn't being performed should remain at OK. Next step is to look for the button that says switch to basic settings. Click it and it will automatically start the alignment process. You'll see the values in the boxes jump around and the last box will tell you hey the adaption is running leave me be. You'll know when it is done when the box has remained still and the last box is back to the status adaptation OK. Next step is to look for the button that says switch to measuring blocks. From here you can go ahead and close this window and start your car. Now that the car is up and running, you want to take the time to get the car heated up to operating temperature. Doing so will give you the most accurate data when we begin logging on the road. When it comes to data logging and testing out new tunes, I like to do it in two phases. For phase one, I use this entire driving session mainly as a testing phase. For the second phase, it's for high performance applications. But let's start with the first phase. The main idea for the session is to see how the car reacts on the road. That means normal driving such as highway and freeway routes, granny shifting, climbing up and down hills, pretty much anything you would encounter when you're not trying to smoke a Honda. Also this phase will allow the ECU to gather its own data to reveal if there are any issues. Meaning fault codes that say there's something not working properly, which will affect your performance overall. At this time, we're going to open up our Maestro Logger. To do this, first open up the Eurodyne Flash program, and instead of clicking the button to start, take a look at the top of the window and you want to go into the category called Other Functions. Among the drop down menu, you should see the Maestro Logger. Go ahead and open that up. It will start to connect automatically, and then the Eurodyne Logger will pop up. and you'll see a nice live representation of pre-selected measuring blocks. Very cool setup, but not really easy to read. It's all for looks. Anyways, we can change the view of our measuring blocks by going to this top portion and selecting text view. And there we have physical numbers that are updating live. All these numbers are very accurate and are updating at a very high speed. To the right of the measuring blocks, we have a few settings here to change the units of measurements. And you can change this according to your preference. And down to the left corner, we have two buttons to start and stop our data logging. Once you hit start, a file will be created live until you press the stop button. The file will automatically be saved to your computer and can be opened in Microsoft Excel so you can view it in detail. And also you can use these logs that you saved to tune your custom Maestro file. Overall, great job by Eurodyne, one of my favorite features of the software. So now that we got our logger set up and the car is ready, we can begin the phase by driving normally. One of the biggest impacts on your performance is your fuel trims. In a nutshell, if your fuel trims stray too far away from the usual tolerance, it will trigger fault codes and if not fixed right away, it can cause damage to the engine or other parts. Fuel trims do take a while to develop as it needs as much data as possible. So it's important to simulate every driving condition as possible in phase one. This means spending a couple of minutes on the road logging your usual driving conditions. After a few minutes, the ECU will calculate your fuel trims and automatically store this data, which can be accessed in the measuring blocks. Smoke weed every day. To view your current fuel trims, open up your Eurodyne flash program and access your measuring blocks. Once you get to the main window, enter block 032. The first two boxes is what we're going to focus on. First box indicates the fuel trim status at idle and the second box indicates the status at elevated engine speeds. You'll see either positive or negative values. Positive values indicate a lean condition so the ECU reacts by adding fuel to the engine to balance out the air fuel mixture. 
Negative values indicate a rich condition, so the ECU reacts by withdrawing fuel to balance out the air-fuel mixture. The general idea is to maintain the perfect 14.7 air-fuel ratio which would be 0%, meaning no fuel being added or subtracted. But it's not a perfect world, so don't be alarmed if you see something other than zero. Since that is the case, the ECU will allow a certain amount before it triggers a fault code to alert that there is a serious problem. A simple guideline to use is within the range of positive or negative 10%. Anything past that, and then you should expect an issue with something within your engine, whether it be a vacuum leak, faulty sensor, fuel pump, and so forth. In my case, the first box which is at idle says negative 0.9%. This tells us that there is a rich condition and fuel is being withdrawn at idle. Not a perfect zero, but it is as close to zero as it can get, so I'm not too worried about it. The second box, which is at elevated engine speeds, say positive 7.8%. Much higher value which indicates a lean condition, so fuel has been added. But using the plus and minus 10% rule, it is within range. If I wanted to, I could improve this value by checking for issues with my sensors, looking at leaks in the air system, or look into my fueling system for issues as well. If I don't find any issues with the hardware, the next step is to look at my tuning setup and make adjustments to better improve my fuel trims. Since we're already here, we can check the fault codes. The button is right next to the measuring blocks. And it turns out, I do have a fault code P1297, which is a pressure drop in my connection charger throttle valve. This I already know the issue and it's because I have a blow off valve. So the pressure drop is all the air escaping to the atmosphere when I let off the throttle. Other than that, there is nothing that indicates why I have a lean condition. At this same menu, you can clear the fault codes if you want. Alright guys, sorry but I do have to cut this video off from here. We still have a lot to cover for tuning. Phase 1 of the data logging process is complete. And in the next video, we can move on to phase 2 for the high performance portion of data logging. Once we have all our data, I'll break it all down, take a look at what's important to know, and then we can apply it to our Maestro tune by making changes to our maps. Mahalo guys for watching. I hope you all learned something today. Don't forget to leave a like, comment what you guys think, share and subscribe if you haven't already. V-Dub gang, I'll see y'all on the next one.